Episode 136 of the Read to Lead podcast is brought to you by FreshBooks, offering a month of unrestricted use totally free right now, and you don't need a credit card when you sign up for this free trial. Claim your free month right now, freshbooks.com slash read to lead, and enter read to lead in the how did you hear about us section. If a boss can tell you exactly what they need you to do, then they don't need you to do it. Software is incredibly powerful. If if they can, like, say step one, step two, they'll just write a program for it. Welcome to the Read to Lead podcast with Jeff Brown. Jeff believes that if you desire to achieve true success in business and in life, then consistent and intentional reading is a must. The Read to Lead podcast will not only help you narrow this ever-important reading list, but also bring you key insights and valuable feedback from some of today's most successful and inspiring authors. And now, here's Jeff. Hi there, and welcome to the podcast that is dedicated to your personal and professional growth. We talk about things like leadership, productivity, career, personal development, business, entrepreneurship, sales, and much, much more. And in just a moment, you and I are going to be joined by Ellery Wells. Ellery is a friend and author of a new book called Exit Strategy, The Exact Tactics to Transition from Where You Have to Be to Where You Want to Be. And I'm going to be asking Ellery about how reading and a mindset of learning impacted his career and trajectory, why he believes so strongly that everyone should be creating content online, getting past what might be the uncomfortable hurdle of selling something you've created, and much, much more, including, if there's time, a listener question. The latest issue of Success Magazine suggests that the 9 to 5 job is over. Whether that means more people begin telecommuting, more people are working for themselves, or a combination of the two remains to be seen. But if either is a topic that interests you, you're definitely going to want to stick around for today's conversation with Ellery. As you may not realize, creating a podcast each and every week does have its costs associated with it, and it's because of people like the folks at cloud accounting software FreshBooks that were able to offset some of those costs. Uh, Recently, they did a run with us, an advertising run that lasted about 14 weeks, and that campaign turned out to be successful enough that FreshBooks decided to renew. So thank you very much for taking advantage of that free month-long trial, if you indeed did. I had a chance to sit down with Rob and Tim from FreshBooks a couple of weeks ago in Chicago and really enjoyed hearing from their heart about FreshBooks, what the company stands for, and the story and history behind the company, things that I'll be sharing with you more about in the coming weeks. If you've yet to take advantage of that free month-long trial, especially if you're like me, working for yourself, or maybe starting a side hustle and looking to invoice clients down the road, FreshBooks is absolutely your best bet. As I've mentioned before, I've used them now for seven years, and I stand behind them 100%. To take advantage of that free trial, it's as simple as going to freshbooks.com slash read to lead. You don't need a credit card or anything at all. Just freshbooks.com slash read to lead. And when you see the how did you hear about us section, be sure and put in the phrase read to lead there as well. That credits it back to us and lets FreshBooks know where you came from. You're supporting read to lead when you take this free trial and there's absolutely no obligation for you to do so. Again, one more time, that's freshbooks.com slash read to lead. Ellery Wells is a writer and coach and from an early age recognized his ability to connect people and build successful teams. And he says he still remembers that nauseating feeling of logging into his work computer while miserable in corporate America. So if, if you identify with that, you've, you've definitely come to the right place uh, because Ellery's goal is to help you avoid that same feeling. He's also the author of the brand new book, Exit Strategy, the exact tactics to transition from where you have to be to where you want to be. Ellery, welcome to the Read to Lead podcast. Hey, Jeff. Thank you. That was a great, great, great introduction. You'll make anything sound good. So, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm excited and honored to be here. Well, this is the first time I've ever done an introduction where my dogs decided they were going to participate. <laughs> hey, you know that just that's the that's the special sauce. That's what people <laughs> want to know. That's right. Well, uh, well, you and I have some commonalities in our history. I think in our background. I know I've um, had my share of instances where I was working a job that I didn't really like, 
And one of the ways I tried to improve myself and improve my lot in life was by becoming a lifelong learner, reading books. And I'd love to hear a bit about how, in your case, reading and devouring books help serve as that sort of spark that, that set you upon a, a brand new path. Absolutely, Jeff. I will say that one of the chapters of the book, I, I might get it wrong. I'm going to have to look it up here, but it's <laughs> something to the effect. I think you even made a comment to it uh, or about it when we were in Chicago, but it is chapter nine, John Maxwell ruins my career. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, when I was at Dell, there was um, downsizing layoffs or whatever. And I, I learned from a very early age, back back when I was a teenager, you always had to be doing something. You always had to be adding value or they would send you they would send you home. And when you're making, I don't know, like $7 an hour and you're looking for that new pair of jeans at American Eagle, I mean, you got to stay, you, so you pick up the, the broom and you start sweeping. And the same principle applied when I was at Dell. We were going through all of these downsizings and I wanted to provide value. So I started this book club and just learn it, wanting to be a better leader. I wanted to move into a management position. I wanted to be able to uh, lead my extended team and, and increase in better results. Reading has always been something that I have tried to do. It's one of the things we can control. We can all have that that control over where we are headed mm. by what books we read. I know uh, my experience was such that as I began to read and learn more, I found that it wasn't too long before I was in a position where I knew more about certain things than the executives did. Yeah. And, and I didn't do a very good job all the time of, of sharing my thoughts and my expertise. I sort of, you know, wore that like a chip on my shoulder and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a, a chest out kind of uh, I'm better than you kind of mentality rather than trying to leverage that in more positive ways. Did, did you experience that at all? A hundred percent. And that's where John Maxwell ruin my career. That's where that exactly plays in mm. is I was seeing all, I, I was reading a whole bunch, Jeff. I read um, this probably is nothing compared to you or some of your readers and past guests, but I think it was in 2013 or 14, I read 18 books mm. and that was one of them. And up until that point, I'd been reading, you know, all of these leadership principles, business principles, how to treat your people, how to fill in the blank. All of that was focused on companies that had less than a thousand employees like uh, Dave Ramsey's organization, for example, had three or 400. And then I read Maxwell's book and he's talking about Costco and Costco is one of the largest companies in the world. And, and my company had 80,000 employees and I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> this stuff isn't just for small businesses anymore. Here's a case study of it working. And I absolutely kind of saw it as a, a chip on my shoulder. Like uh, if, if Costco can do it, why can't we do it? Yeah. And you just see, what could be, and then you see what is through that lens. And when they don't add up, for me, I it was all downhill from there. I think. <laughs> yeah. you, you you knew your days at, at Dell were were probably numbered at that point. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had had that number, and then I could have been, <laughs> been much more prepared. But I, I didn't. Well, you talk about reading eighteen books uh, in a year. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I set a similar goal of of just a book a month, twelve books in the course of a year. And I read in your book, I think the stat is a few years old, but it may be the most recent one we have from 2013, uh, that says in the last 12 months, 81% of the population have read zero business yeah. books. And so, again, that's one of the reasons why this podcast exists is to you know, try to make a dent in that. Well, oddly enough, I was reading the latest issue of Success Magazine, which came in my mailbox just a couple of days ago. And on the cover, it says, join the movement. The nine to five job is over. And I sort of sense uh, a lot of that in your writing that you feel similarly. In your opinion, should everybody be striving uh, to work for themselves ultimately? It, it, we have a weird culture here in the United States where we're kind of downsizing. I don't know if it's a, a long tail reflection of what happened in 2007, 8 and 9, you know, where our economy kind of uh, went down, which we're still paying extra for bags on airlines and our economy's bounced back. I don't know what that's <laughs> about. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we've kind of got this um, scrappy mentality, you know, with the emergence of technology, uh, we now have the ability to work 
completely remotely, oftentimes from very inexpensive laptops or Chromebooks or something like that. So it's kind of a convergence of those two things, the wanting to downsize, wanting to or being able to work from home. Um, we all we all work for ourselves, whether we know it or not. One of the goals that I have is to create a culture of entrepreneurship where we all take responsibility for the results that we're getting. Mm-hmm. So I would agree with the headline. It is happening. Technology enables it. But really taking the reins for uh, our own results. I'm a big fan of that too. Hmm. Yeah, in, in, a, in a world where so many of us who are working regular jobs are doing tasks that can be done anywhere, you have to believe it's only a matter of time before they will be done from anywhere. I mean, why, why continue to require people to commute and work from a cubicle when what you're asking them to do doesn't require them to do it from that cubicle? Well, I took it one step further a couple of years ago, Jeff, and I said, if a boss can tell you exactly what they need you to do, then they don't need you to do it. <laughs> I mean, software is incredibly powerful. If if they can, like, say, step one, step two, they just, they'll just write a program for it. Right. Well, I know for, uh, for your journey as um, an entrepreneur, someone working for yourself, uh, you started – uh, with a blog. Uh, why uh, have you come to believe so strongly, Ellery, in the power of blogging? Because anybody can do it, and the power of a blog can be leveraged exponentially. Mm. Podcasting, YouTube videos, anybody can do those things as well, but typically the barrier to entry is a little bit higher. Mm. But blogging also forces you to hone your skills in a lot of ways that other things might not outline your thoughts, put things together in a cohesive argument, make Mm. a case for something. But mostly, mostly Jeff, it's because it is the barrier to entry is very low. However, I will say, and as you know, because the barrier is so low, it's that much harder to stand out. But when you do, when you can reach people all over the world. Mm. Well, a lot of folks new at this um, understand this idea of creating content. But oftentimes the struggle is knowing where to start and whether or not you're headed in the right direction. So when it comes to creating content for that person who's ultimately doing it for the first time and sharing their own uh, knowledge and insights, what advice would you give? I realize blogging takes uh, takes a lot of time. So if anyone's out there like, man, I just hate writing or can't sit still long enough, they're, replace the word blogging with recorded that video or it's, it's doing something. Mm. Um, one of the greatest tragedies that I think we have in our world today, Jeff, is we undermine and devalue our own story. We think, oh, well, I'm not special. I don't have any particular talents. Forget all that. Mm. Everybody that listens to your show, has been on your show, has heard of your show. We all have a very compelling story that will attract people to us. And we need to share that story with whatever type of content, whatever it is, whatever content you're wanting to create, whether it is that blog, video, podcast, whatever. Start with how you can tell your story with your content. Well, once I've, once I've done that for a time, uh, and I've been doing that for a long time, uh, but for that person who wants to get to the point where they're actually taking what they know and turning it into something they can sell, why is it important in your view that, that they begin with something small like a, like a $10 product? Because not everybody is ready to spend 100 or or 1000 If you can really provide value to someone, entertain them, educate them, uh, whatever, for $10, it's a low barrier to entry to get somebody into knowing, liking, and trusting you. If you're creating free content along the way, it's it's a stepping stone. I always use the example, Jeff, of of Panda Express or you know Shogun or whatever is in the mall. I can't remember the last time I thankfully set <laughs> set foot in a mall. <laughs> but you know you're you're hungry. You've been shopping for a couple hours, and you walk into the food court, and you've like they've got their freshest, hottest orange chicken. And so they give you this free sample and are like, hey, that's pretty good. Um, maybe I'll go back and buy a, a lunch plate, you know, with two sides and or whatever and a drink for 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. So they've given you the sample. That's your free content. That's the podcast, the blog, 
uh, the, the YouTube videos, you're giving stuff away for free. And then you get them into the $10 lunch. That's your $10 product. Maybe it's an ebook or an email course or, or something like that. That's the same process I have experienced in my business. And I, I think everyone else can apply to theirs. My, most of my coaching clients have walked their way through and up these steps from free content, 10, 20, $30 product, $2,000 coaching. Hmm. Well, in part uh, three of, of Ellery's book, he, he lays out a roadmap for developing your exit strategy. It's a part of the book that almost wasn't included. Now, we've touched on some of this in the answers you've just given, Ellery, but walk us through, if you would, overview style, some of the rest of this this two-month process. Sure. I So once you've got your groundwork, you look at planning long-term. Uh, we talk about content calendars. Again, it's not just blogging calendars and what you want to write, but uh, things that will take customers through the process of knowing, liking, and trusting you so that they'll give you their that will give you the opportunity to, to help them solve their problems. That's what it's about. Mm. What problem are you going to solve and how are you going to do it? And then telling people that that story. Uh, in week three, we talk about some of the flashier stuff like creating a logo. Uh, we'll put some things in place uh, for SEO. We talk about WordPress plugins. There are other platforms out there that I mentioned. Some I recommend, some that I don't. And I tell you why. Uh, right in the middle, when you're about four weeks in, it's all about creating content. It's about shooting the the video for your store before it opens, or it's giving people the factory tour of, hey, look, this is behind the scenes of of how we make our delicious cupcakes. But it's it's walking people through, again, this process of discovering who you are, believing that you have what they need, and then the end result, like we can help you get here. I am no longer hungry because I had this delicious hamburger or whatever. Week five is one of my my favorite ones. I called it going outside, but it's reaching out and connecting with other people. Too many people, Jeff, think competition and I love competition, but when we think about competition instead of collaboration, we hinder our own progress. Instead of working together we look at it as kind of this, well, if, if Jeff's podcast does really well, the Ellery Wells show is not going to do it. No. <laughs> I mean, how many different ways can you as a business owner or a podcaster, blogger, YouTube or whatever, collaborate with people and, and make not only make friends, but broaden your audience, make more money, meet the needs of your customers better when you think about what else that they need and how else you can help them. Yeah, it's not a finite pie. It, it's, uh, I kind of like to think of it as a rising tide lifts all, all boats. If, if, if I saw other podcasters as competition, there would be a lot of people I've interviewed on this show who would never have been on the show because they're also podcasters. Right. Uh, but I, I want to bring more people to podcasting. When, when another podcaster brings someone new to podcasting down the road, that can benefit me because they may also sample this show. So, yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree with that 100%. What's next? Uh, building influence is borrowing it from somebody else, like going on somebody's podcast or doing networking events. There's probably a lot of people in each of our communities, Jeff, that will do like a chamber event where they'll go and, you know, just by being associated with the Chamber of Commerce, you'll build influence with other members. They see you on stage or whatever. They see you on stage speaking a podcast movement like you and I were at just a, a week or so ago. The uh, week seven, it, it, we bring back the uh, the data from week one. I wanted to get everybody set up, Jeff, in the very beginning with all of the stuff that a lot of people might not necessarily be interested in. It gets very technical. But here in week seven, all that stuff that's been collecting information about site traffic, where people are coming from, what they're doing, on your site, what social networks they are from, where just where they live in the world. Mm. We circled that back into week seven. And then finally, week eight is kind of the marketing and promotion. I, I am a big believer in the phrase, you have to be your own cheerleader. You have to be your own customer. If you don't believe in your product or service or your donuts or your podcast or your videos, how can you expect anybody else to? Mm. So it's it's how to market all of those things using social media, using emails, using autoresponders. Part three, I 
I took a lot of inspiration from Michael Hyatt's book, Platform, Jeff. I think uh, I'm pretty sure you have read that. You mm-hmm. and I probably have discussed it uh, at least once. But I dog-eared that book, highlighted, underlined. It was a textbook for me, and I really want part three, this roadmap, to be that textbook for somebody else. It, it It's not – just the sexy part of building a business, but news alert, building a business isn't always sexy. So <laughs> I, I hope, and I wanted my book to have, to serve that same function where you go and you pull it off your shelf and you say, um, okay, I know Ellery talked about this. I need to go back and, and refer to it and, and apply it to where I am in my business right now. Yeah. Part three was, was exactly that. One big area of struggle for uh, many jumping out on their own is, is building their email list. And we hear a lot about lead magnets as, as a part of that process. Define that term first for the uninitiated, Ellery, and then share any advice that you might have for designing a great one. So for the, are, are most of your Listeners, Jeff, do they say they are online people or are they more offline brick and mortar type stuff? It's a little bit of both, but when 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 surveyed, the number one topic that the majority of listeners want to hear more about is starting a side hustle or entrepreneurship, um, doing something in addition to or in place of their present job. Okay, so. We'll uh, we'll try to touch on the definition of a of a lead magnet for for both. A lead magnet might be like sign up to get free updates, like uh, you get to blog right in your inbox. That would be more towards the people who are just kind of passively interested in what you're doing, just kind of mm-hmm. curious. It could also be enter your email and we'll send you uh, a coupon for ten percent off lunches every week. You know, or get our our you know upgrade your small bowl of queso to a large bowl of queso, Mm -hmm. something like that. I'll use one of my most popular ones. Jeff is this a a 30 day email course where I email you lessons on how to uh, not necessarily the, the beginning steps of starting your blog, but how do you turn it into a message and things that make your, your website look really professional Mm -hmm. or people can opt in for a webinar where you teach or train something. Uh, I got a chance to hang out with and talk to Tim page who does all of the lead pages webinars. And a few years ago, I think it was the first podcast movement. He said their most popular opt in was a one page list of podcasting tools. People just want the resource. They read the, read a blog post or they hear it mentioned and they want to print it off. I had a guy print off my podcasting essentials, PDF and he gave it to his wife and said, here's what I want for Christmas. (laughs) So it's just providing a small amount of value in exchange for a way to connect and and contact people later down the road. Mm. And it goes back to what we talked about before in the sense that before offering that first product that you sell, maybe that's that $10 product, you need to be creating value and offering things for free in exchange for email addresses and a lead magnet is a great way to offer that and provide that value in addition to the content of the emails you're sending out once people uh, sign up. So what advice would you offer to someone, Ellery, maybe uncomfortable with being on the selling side of the equation and maybe for the first time or uncomfortable with the idea of charging somebody for something they've created? If I'm struggling with getting past that, what advice would you give? That's a wonderful question because it's something that I deal with with almost every coaching client who is not already uh, in a position of owning an established business. Mm. I, I, I think this is the best analogy. I don't know if someone told it to me, Jeff, or I came up with it, but I think if you really want to be successful, you have to look at your product or service like a glass of water. And there are thirsty people everywhere. You just have to find them. <laughs> We've all been thirsty if, you know, whether it's just after a workout or just on a hot day. And did it really bug us to pay a dollar, two dollars for ice cold bottle of water? <laughs> Not really. But they got money, the person who s- sold it, and I got my needs met. It wasn't a big deal. I mean, sure, I might have found a uh, a water fountain and it'd be kind of like lukewarm water and it tastes a little bit gritty or whatever, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have no problem. And most people don't. When we get a when, when we get a really good product that, that makes us not hungry anymore, not thirsty anymore, or an umbrella to shade us or whatever, we don't have a problem paying for it. It's, it's totally a problem in our head, between our ears mm. to say, I'm – 
I I can't charge for this. I mean, that's a that's a mental block that we all have to come through. You just got to believe that your product's going to help somebody. And armed with that, you can you're much more comfortable going out there and and talking about it and then ultimately selling it. Well, I want to move on to some a couple of questions not directly related to the book, Ellery. But before I do that, is there anything else you want to make sure we know about the book? Like I alluded to a minute ago, Jeff, I I know I can't coach everybody or teach everybody. Since I know I can't reach everybody on an individual level, I wanted to give somebody the best information that I could possibly give them. And that is what I put into 290 something pages of this book. You never really lose anything when you're building a business, all that knowledge you accumulate, even if it's for something that doesn't work, you can pivot it towards something else. So just go out there and and, and try something. Don't be miserable. My way of doing that uh, is in exit strategy. Hmm. Well, we established early on that you are a reader uh, and, and a voracious one. And I would love for you to name for us the two or three books over the years that have had the biggest impact on you. Maybe the, those titles that you go back to again and again. Sure. I will tell you that one of the books that has really shaped my business model is by Brendan Burchard called The Millionaire Messenger. Mm. Coming in at these different levels, being able to meet people where they are mm. uh, directly came from that. I would also say Jeff Platform, like I mentioned, Michael's done a great job. Uh, Michael Hyatt has done a great job of um, helping people build their platforms. Mm. And, and I, I really used his book very heavily as well. Uh, I would also say is either the Icarus Deception – or maybe it was Lynchpin. I actually I think it was the Icarus Deception, Jeff, where he's talking about the legend or myth or whatever it is of of Icarus. He flew too close to the sun. Mm-hmm. The sun melted the wax that held all the feathers together and he crashed. The premise of the book is that we are so afraid of flying too close and getting burned that we don't ever take off. Mm. So many people like in the Icarus deception, they're so afraid of failing that they just never do anything. It gives me chills to say that because I think I was there so many times over, over the last 30 something years, uh, whether it's asking a girl to dance (laughs) or applying to that college or we're, we're so afraid of failing or falling flat on. We just, we just don't even try. Mm. And that, it's the people who can push through that and try something bold and that might not work. They're the ones that we admire. They're the Steve Jobses. They're the the Bill Gates or the the Jeff Browns who do something that's kind of crazy and you don't know if it's gonna gonna work. That they're they're the ones that we look up to, watch and listen and buy from and and pay attention to. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that is the first time in history that my name and the name Bill Gates have been mentioned in the same sentence. So I thank you for that. <laughs> well, uh, I do what I can. <laughs> well, Ellery, uh, what's what's next for you? What are you working on now that uh, has got you and, and your team excited? I'll throw back to uh, Kerry's episode uh, on your, your show. I think it was episode 135. He said, talked about your book being the beginning of the conversation instead of the end of it. And that's what I'm trying to do. I did not set out to have the roadmap become like some eight-week coaching program or eight-week mastermind. That was not my intention at all. But whenever I was writing it out in my notes, I thought, how can I make this into manageable chunks for a very busy but dedicated person. Mm. So what I, well, immediately I am working on the audio book. I had a good friend that said, I'm not going to read your book, but I'll listen to it. When is the audio book (laughs) going to be ready? So immediately working on that. Uh, Step two would be turning that into something where, okay, they read the book or they are thinking about reading the book and they want some more in-depth conversation or they want to meet what I call other exit strategists uh, to connect with people and work on this program Mm. Together, So there will be something that goes right along with that that is a deeper dive, a deeper look, uh, an extended community of people who are doing similar things. Well, the book, again, is called Exit Strategy, the exact tactics to transition from where you have to be to where you want to be. And the author, 
is Ellery Wells. Ellery, thank you so much for uh, uh, being a part of the show. We appreciate your time, and thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's been an honor and a privilege to chat with you and especially get to chat with your audience. As usual, you can get the recap of my conversation with Ellery, including the resources and links we talked about, those books he mentioned as well, at the show notes page created just for this episode. Find that at readtoleadpodcast.com slash 136 for episode 136. I mentioned a few weeks ago experimenting with incorporating listener questions into occasional episodes, and I want to do that today. And our listener question today comes from Osai. Hi, my name is Osaye Mokbaila Sisi, and I help businesses to hire and retain the right people. Essentially, I am a talent management coach. I can be reached on my website, osayilasisi.com. That's O-S-A-Y-I-L-A-S-I-S-I.com. My question is about personal development, and it is, What books do you read that help you to stay encouraged? Or what books do you read that help you to get out of feeling discouraged when things are not working out the way you expect them to? Or you start to get afraid that they won't work out the way you expect them to? Thank you so much for this, and I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for the question, Osai. Uh, the first book I thought of when you posed your question is, is not going to be one everybody is going to want to dive into or agree with or read, but it's, it's near and dear to my heart and in my life and my journey, and, and that's the Bible. And so when I need encouragement, in fact, even when I don't need encouragement, <laughs> every day I try to start my morning with reading a passage from the Bible and, and doing some sort of daily devotional. And sometimes I'll even take notes on that and put those in an app called uh, Day One. And so if, if something strikes me, something I want to remember uh, comes out of doing that devotional, I'll, I'll write those notes into the Day One app. So I always have those uh, to refer back to. Another more traditional book I thought of as, as you were asking your question is a book that was featured way, way back on episode two of the Read to Lead podcast, a conversation with Robert D. Smith about the book 20,000 Days and Counting. He contends that most people measure their lives in years, but how would our thought process change if we instead measured our lives in days? Take, for example, something you want to accomplish. Let's say it's writing a book, which, by the way, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, July 19th, is something we're going to dive into tomorrow in a special webinar with Carrie Oberbrunner. Find out more at readtoleadpodcast.com slash author. But let's, let's, let's say you want to write a book. Now think about how most people get caught up in, oh, there's, there's chapters to write. There's what am I going to title the book? What's the subtitle going to be? And you get overwhelmed and bogged down trying to just get that process started. Well, Robert says, well, just take one thing. What can you do today in 15 minutes to get you a step closer to your book? Maybe today it's just... Let's, let's, let's write some title ideas, and, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. And then tomorrow for 15 minutes, let's work on writing some potential chapter titles, all right? And then in the next day for 15 minutes, let's write the introduction. And, then the ne- and, and you get the idea. You go on and on and on and just break it down into these little bite-sized chunks, and you'll probably get more done in 15 minutes toward writing that book, say, than you've accomplished in the last five years just thinking about writing that book. So 20,000 Days and Counting, the crash course for mastering your life right now, I think you'll find very, very encouraging. And thank you again for your question. If you have a question you'd like to have answered on the show, whether it's about any of the topics we discuss here on a regular basis or about, say, podcasting or making the transition from working for someone else to working for yourself, you can go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash question and leave your question via voicemail, or you can write to me via email, jeff at readtoleadpodcast.com. Regarding that webinar with Carrie, if you're listening to this and it's after July 20th, you can still catch the replay of that webinar. Again, go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash author to find out more about it. Finally, to help support the show, I hope you'll take advantage of that free offer from FreshBooks. Find out more about it at freshbooks.com slash readtolead. 
Well, that's going to do it for this week. I look forward to seeing you next time for the Read to Lead podcast. Thanks so much for listening to the Read to Lead podcast. As a subscriber, we challenge you to be more than just a passive listener. Become a vital member of the community. Visit us on the web at readtoleadpodcast.com. Until next time, remember, leaders read and readers lead. Oh, 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 oh,